Okay. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, this is basically a webinar to go through all the resources that are available on HMFUtrade.com. Uh, so today's webinar, we're going to step through the website where we're going to talk about the HMFU heat map, the scanner, and then um, also talk about the email alerts. That's getting a lot of attention worldwide. Um, so we're going to emphasize a lot on the email alerts especially and kind of show you exactly where you as a trader, they can give you a, a huge advantage in trading uh, compared to anything else out there. Okay. Um, before we begin, just to let everyone know, if you haven't attended any of my webinars, um, feel free to raise your hand. Uh, when you do raise your hand, uh, we will unmute you, and you do have the ability to sit there and talk to me live and ask the questions. Um, if you don't want to do that, you could just post the questions in the chat room, uh, in the question room, and post the questions there. Okay. Uh, feel free to stop me as we go through the presentation to ask any questions uh, that you have. Okay. So before we begin, uh, this is our normal disclaimer. This is state. This is for education and use only. Uh, we're not soliciting you to buy or sell any particular instrument at all. If you decide to take a trade based on anything from the presentation, you, you're doing that at your own risk. All the charts today are going to be basically from Thinkorswim from TD Ameritrade. Okay. <clears throat> And sorry, having a little PowerPoint issue. Okay, so the agenda for today, uh, we've kind of split it up into five main areas. Uh, the very first thing we're going to talk about is what are the resources available for all the traders on the website? You know, um, so we're going to talk about what the resources are, what symbols we're scanning, what markets we're supporting, and so forth. Okay, next we're going to go for the website layout. Uh, we have undergone a website change, so I want to go for the website layout, kind of show everyone what's available on the website and where all the information is. Uh, that way you kind of know everything and where it's at. Third, we're going to kind of go for the heat map. Talk about the heat map. You guys have probably seen it on the videos. We're going to talk about the color code, the number systems, uh, the numbers, uh, exactly how they relate to a wave pattern. So we will show you how that works too. And exactly, you know, if you're a trend trader, what you should be looking for. If you're a counter trend trader, what you should be looking for. Also, if you're, you know, an aggressive trader where you like to trade oversold or overbought conditions, we'll also be talking to you about that too. Okay. Next, we'll talk to you about um, email alerts. That's probably the most exciting section uh, that a lot of people um, love to pretty much go through and talk about. The uh, reason why that's an email alert that gives you all the multiple time frame signals uh, so you don't have to go through uh, and look at any charts or do any analysis at all. So you could do all your research on the emails, believe it or not, without even looking at a chart. Uh, once you find the opportunity, uh, on doing the research on the emails, you then could sit there and just go to a chart and place the trades. Okay? And then lastly, we're going to talk about the scanner, and then we'll wrap up by basically going through any Q&A uh, that you may have. But of course, as we go through the presentation, if you have any questions or anything like that, uh, you're more than welcome to ask in as we move forward. Okay? Any guys, anyone has any questions about the agenda? or uh, things that you're expecting to see that I haven't covered. I think I've covered almost everything out here uh, that the website and the resources that we have available. Okay. Now remember, this is not an Ichimoku webinar at all. Um, this is basically talking about all the resources that are available um, from all the Ichimoku signals and so forth. Okay. So let's begin. Um, this is a uh, kind of like a two-box slide that kind of shows you exactly what we have available. So we have two main products on our website. The very first is basically our heat map over here, and then we have our scanner product over here. And I'll explain exactly why we have two different products in just a moment, but you'll see. The main product that we have is our heat map. Okay, and we'll go through this visually so you have an idea of what it looks like in a minute. But basically, the heat map is a glorified, a simple glorified glo global view of all the time frame and strategies for a particular instrument. So, in one line, you could ex see exactly what's going on with the day trading time frames, the middle, 
and also the long-term time frames. You could see from the holistic uh, point of view of what's going on and you know what's going to be happening and so forth. Okay, and we're going to be explaining this in detail, but I just want to give you an idea of what the description is. The time frames that we support are basically 10 minute, 30 minute, 120 minute, 240, and daily and weekly. Um, a lot of people have asked us to support five minutes and 15 minutes. Unfortunately, we don't do that. The reason why is we've done uh, research on fractal wave patterns with uh, different time frames uh, at the institutional level. Uh, so these are the time frames that we use on a daily basis uh, between myself and all our students. Um, and we know that the waves within waves and they have fractal relationships between these time frames. So this is one of the reasons why uh, we're only supporting these time frames. Uh, I understand there's going to be requests for 5 minutes and 15 minutes because that's probably the most popular time frames that most retail traders use. However, uh, from the institutional point of view, we really don't use them at all. Okay. Um, the instruments that we support, uh, and we'll go for these and you'll see them yourself, uh, we support all the major currency pairs out there and some exotics too. So we've got over 30, 30, 30 plus currency pairs out there. Uh, in the future, uh, we will be supporting more of the exotic currencies too uh, once we find a good data feed provider uh, for those exotics. At this point, we really haven't found someone uh, and, you know, we have to be very careful, especially since currency is a decentralized market, to find the appropriate data feed, um, especially for the exotics since uh, there's not much volume uh, behind them anyways. Next, <clears throat> on the U.S. side, from the U.S. stock side, we basically have uh, four different heat maps that are available um, for the U.S. stock side. We have the Dow 30, S&P 500. We also have the international ETS, and then we have sector ETS. So if you look at these four different products for the U.S. stocks, these heat maps basically break down um, majority of what people are looking for on the U.S. stock side. Okay. Uh, next, we basically support all the future products in the U.S. So we support all the commodity futures, gasoline, crude oil, lean hogs, uh, copper, uh, treasury bonds, uh, treasury notes, everything out there, and we'll show you all those products in a minute, but we support all the majority of the future products out there from both the uh, CME to the CBOT exchange to the NYMEX and so forth. Um, <clears throat> recently, within a month, we've added in beta testing Malaysian stocks too, where we support the top 250 volume uh, based stocks out there in the Malaysian market. We also support the Guadalupe Lumpur uh, Index and the Palm Oil uh, futures too for the Malaysian market. Um, we're doing this reason why is we're getting ready to expand uh, by the end of this month into global market where we will be supporting India, Singapore, UK, and Canada initially by the end of this month. What we're going to be doing is supporting uh, the top 250 stocks in each of those markets uh, and it's going to be based on volume. Okay. So our heat map product, which gives you a, a, a view for each individual product on multiple time frame and strategies, uh, will be available for all these markets uh, in the future, which is pretty much Indian, Singapore, UK, and Canada. Today, we pretty much support all the currencies and pretty much all the instruments on the U.S. side, along with also the stocks and Malaysian futures um, that are out there. Okay, so this gives you an overview of all the time frames and also strategies uh, for each individual instrument on one line. Okay, in order to sit there and start supporting the huge uh, number of stocks on the U.S. side, we've also developed a scanner. Okay, so the scanner, what the scanner does is it takes the Dow 3500 international ETF sectors along with all the other instruments out there on the stock side and we scan uh, all those instruments and look for particular strategies. Okay, so if you look over here, the instruments are basically we cut scan over 7,500 plus stocks. The strategies we have are basically the Kumo breakout. If you're familiar with Ichimoku, if you're not, don't worry. We're going to be talking about that a little later. We also support the Cajuns and Cross. Um, some others that are not there are Tinkins and Cajuns and Cross strategy. And also in the future, we will be adding uh, gap trading which is more a day trading uh, strategy. We also will be talking about consolidation uh, scanners and also we'll be adding a overextended scanner for the traders that like to do counter trend. Okay, 
the strategy is basically search the 7500 symbols for stocks basically a dollar twenty to forty dollars um, we typically find majority of the retail traders and institutions like to trade these type of stocks because they're small caps to mid caps uh, so you know we're basically trying to extend our reach to that type of market instead of stocks above 50 uh, which are pretty much uh, that don't have that big of a percentage gain compared to smaller mid cap stocks also you know stocks that we filter out with on the scanner we make sure they at least have a 500,000 uh, share volume over for a 60-day uh, average okay and we'll be talking about each of these products uh, as we get to them. Also, uh, we will have a person that talks a little about the, the scanner side too, how he uses the scanner on a daily basis uh, for day trading purposes. Uh, and Dave's going to be talking about it uh, here. Uh, and he's actually in our New York office and does this every day. Okay. I know a lot of people use the heat map. A lot of people haven't used the scanner, but we want to uh, kind of go through and show you the advantages of both the products and where each one will be used for what. Does anyone have any questions in regards to the resources that are available, instruments and uh, that are available worldwide? <clears throat> okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start breaking down and. And I get into this. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go for the heat map legend. And before we go into the website or anything like that, what I want to do is I want to break down our number system. Um, you guys have probably seen from the webinars, we have a number system that goes from basically 0 to 5 that represents opportunities. If you haven't seen it, don't worry. We're about to explain it in great detail right now. Okay. Before we explain everything, I want you guys to know a couple of things. Red to us is always going to mean bearish. That means you're going to be betting on it going down. Um, the other day we met, ran into some retail traders where they didn't think you can bet on things going down. Believe it or not, you can bet on things going down as much as you could bet on things going up. So red to us is basically mean you're going to bet on that particular instrument, whether it be currencies, futures, or stocks. You're going to be betting on it going down green whenever something's green it's going to denote a bullish opportunity that means you're looking at an opportunity to go long where you're betting on it going up okay when you look at our number system um, basically uh, whenever you see a two four or five it basically indicates a trend type of pattern if you see a zero one or three it basically means that it's a counter trend pattern now what we mean by counter trend, if you don't know what that means, counter trend is basically means you're going against the trend, which you're going opposite. Okay, So you feel like the major trend is over or is about to engage in the pullback. So what you're going to do is you're going to bet opposite of the trend for some short-term profit. Okay, So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a wave pattern, and this could be a wave on a chart. Okay, and we're going to first talk about a line here where price is all of a sudden just going down, 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 down. Okay, so this is basically a bearish trend. Okay, and if you note here, it says bearish trend, and in the five, that indicates basically a trend is already occurring and, and is already occurring. Okay, if you ever see these numbers on a heat map that are basically here, if it's black, if it changes to yellow, that means it's overextended. Okay, so basically what's going to happen is you're going to see a trend that's going down, down, down. Okay, and basically the opportunity is lost for you already. So there's no way you can make money on this because it's already going down. It's too late to get in and sell this particular product. Now the only opportunity you're going to have is basically make money on it going up. Okay, so right now you have a bearish trend which will be indicated by a five pattern for us. Okay, after the bearish trend is overextended, and oversold, okay, you basically recognize two resistance values. One's going to be a minor and one's going to be a medium. And the reason why you're recognizing these is that this is going to denote exactly when you're going to have a minor pullback, a medium pullback, or a major pullback. Okay, so you already know these resistance values, so you're going to already mark them up here. And what's going to happen is this first one. If price ever gets this minor resistance value, then you basically know that's the first minor pullback for the trend downward. Okay, doesn't mean it's reversing, but it's just a minor pullback where people that sold are taking some profit. 
okay? So price basically went down. You had some people that basically wanted to take some profit. So when they took some profit, price went up, hit the major resistance value. So this is basically classified as a minor pullback, okay? Next, price breaks through this and goes to the medium pullback, okay? When price breaks through this minor resistance, what's going to happen is you're going to change from this 5 value to a 0 value, okay? So this is a medium pullback that's occurring. Now, depending on the space between the minor and the medium resistance, if there's enough space between this, these two resistances, you could actually play a bullish trend on the lower time frames, okay? So if you get a zero on our heat map uh, on a particular time frame, you can go down to a lower time frame and play a bullish trend, which we'll talk more about in a couple of minutes, okay? So this is basically more of a day trading scenario where day traders will look for zero on our heat map on a higher time frames and they could zoom down to a lower time frame and play a bullish trend uh, to the major to the medium resistance on the higher. Is that okay with everyone? Now if you've never done multiple time frame analysis, don't worry about this. It just talk, remember, we've got different types of people on the call. Some are advanced traders, some are new traders, and so forth. So we got to cater to everyone. If you're a beginning trader, remember, you got to filter out some of the advanced trading stuff uh, to get the high-level stuff and get your foundation set. Okay? Now, assuming you get to the medium pullback, okay, at that point, you have to wait to see exactly what's going to happen with price. Okay? If price breaks this medium resistance, then you've got a major pullback that's going to start occurring. If it breaks this resistance here, the value for us is now going to go to the 1. Okay? So we've gone from a red 5, this was bearish, to a 0. And now since this is a break on the resistance and this is going up, this is going to be a green 1. Okay? And don't worry, I'm going to tell you exactly where you're going to start looking for opportunities. Okay? So this is going to be a 1 basically indicating that we are now engaging in the in a, in a medium pullback for this bearish trend here, okay? After a while, it's going to form this little pivot here and form a little wave pattern here, okay? And at that point, once it forms this pattern here, which basically means you're moving to a two scenario, you now have a possibility of trading a major pullback wave upwards, okay? Now, it's going to be a pullback wave going up, but it's going to be limited profit. And the reason why is the overall trend is still down, and what you're doing is you're just creating a major pullback that's going to go up. Okay? If you've seen Elliott wave analysis, this is basically going to be the 4 to 5 wave or the 3 to 4 wave going up, which is the pullback wave. Okay? Uh, there was a question from James. Is the minor resistance a 38.2 uh, retracement and a medium 50% or 62.5? Uh, James, we really don't use Fibonacci uh, in our trading at all. Uh, everything's based on Ichimoku. However, Fibonacci is built into Ichimoku, so a lot of times the Ichimoku indicators are Fibonacci values themselves, so they will land up at the 50% retracement or 62.8. Okay? But this little point right here um, is not based on a Fibonacci at all. It's a proprietary formula that we look for. Uh, so after it breaks this resistance value here from the medium, we look for a certain wave pattern here, which is based on a mathematical formula. Once we get that, then we automatically <coughs> move from that 1 to a 2. Okay. Now, when you get a 2, this is the first time you're going to have an opportunity to play this bullish. Okay. So you have a green bullish. Well, Bob, uh, Bob, the question, uh, Bob had a question. Uh, when you say pullback, do, uh, don't you mean rally? Uh, Bob, yes, you're right, too. This can be a rally. But if you're looking this, at this as a picture in total, remember, this is a bearish trend, and it's still in a pullback phase if it hasn't reversed. So it is a rally to go up. But in theory, this is still a pullback leg. And you could see that if you go to a higher time frame, this is still a pullback leg. Okay. 
the overall trend is still going down. And remember that, because, and you could see that from the higher time frame. And that's where a lot of people get confused. And the reason why I want to make sure you understand that this is still a pullback like is because when you trade a two, even though it's going to trend bullish, it still means it's going to have limited profit. It doesn't mean you're going to have unlimited profit. You're going to be limited. And the reason why is, is that one stage, that major pullback is going to get to a stop. And at that point, if it breaks it, the overall trend, the bearish trend will stop and it'll move into a bullish trend. And if, if it bounces off that, then there's a high possibility of this trend, this bearish trend will resume. Okay? So when you trade this two here, even though it's a rally going up, it means it's a limited profit because the overall trend is still going down. The sediment is still bearish, but you're playing a bullish opportunity going up. Everyone understand that? If not, this would be probably be the perfect time to ask the questions. No questions? Sorry, that's my business partner with his phone. Okay. So now let's proceed forward. Okay. So now what's happening is this is the uh, rally leg, as you want to call it. Uh, so this is pretty much still part of the major pullback that's occurring, that's going up. Okay. So this basically, when you trade this two, okay, you're basically playing this movement up, which is basically upward movement that's going up, but it's going to have limited profit. Okay. Now, that's going to keep on going until you hit a major resistance value. Okay. Now, this major resistance value is going to basically dictate to tell us if that this is going to basically be a major pullback or this is going to be a trend reversal. If price brought, bounces off this major resistance and bounces off it, it starts going down, basically means this whole little move upward here was basically a pullback leg. If price breaks this major resistance, then you now have a possibility of a trend reversal. Is everyone okay with that? Okay. So now we're going to assume that price is going to break this major resistance value. When it breaks this major resistance value, we've now basically moved to a number three. Okay, so this is going to be a green three. This basically means the trend, the bearish trend that was occurring is officially over. This is no longer a pullback leg. And now we're getting into a phase where a possible trend reversal can occur. Two things can occur at this point when you break this major resistance. Either a consolidation pattern can occur or we could enter a bullish trend. Okay, and we're going to examine both of them right now. Now, when you trade, take this opportunity, when this moves into a three, and when price breaks its resistance, dependent volatility and what's going on, this little leg here can look like a bullish trend on the lower time frame, and you can trade that. If you do trade that on the lower time frames, when the higher time frame is in a three, you are will have limited profits, and everything your profits will depend on how much volatility there was in breaking this resistance. If there was a lot of volatility in breaking this resistance, this trend will go up drastically. If there wasn't much, then it's going to just go up a little and then come back down and hit that resistance value again. So on a lower time frame, this can look like a trend. Okay, And if you do trade that, make sure you know that you're going to trade a bullish trend on a lower time frame with limited profits. Everyone okay with that? Now, I'm getting into a lot of stuff. A lot of you guys may say, well, I don't care to hear about this. I just want to know what signals to take. Don't worry. I'm getting there. This is um, catering to the people that want to know the, the patterns behind the numbers. Um, so I'm about to get into that. Uh, once I'm about to finish in about two more minutes, I'm going to get into the simple view of just looking at the numbers and uh, what numbers you should look at and go from there. Uh, some people care about wanting to know all the details behind the scenes. Some people don't. Uh, so for the people that don't, don't worry and just bear with us for just one more minute, okay? 
The next number is the critical number, is number four. So when this basically does like this little pivot formation here and pulls back, the uh, number four will appear. Okay, a number four to us basically indicates a possible trend will occur. Okay, and if the trend does occur, basically it moves from a four to a five. Yep, Mike, we will show you a chart in just a moment. Okay, in fact, we'll show you a lot of charts uh, once we get into uh, the email side, the email alerts. Okay. So here, basically, these are all the numbers that go behind the system. The critical ones that you really need to remember are the twos and fours are the main one that basically start a trend. The two is basically the trend for the major pullback, and the four is a trend for sorry is a trend for a brand new trend that's going to occur. A four basically has unlimited profits depending on what the higher time frame look like. Two will have limited profits. If you're a beginning trader and you only want the high probability trades, you're going to stick with just trading fours. Okay? If you're a day trader and like to do counter trend trading, what you're going to do is you're going to look for threes, ones, and zeros. Okay? So here I've outlined everything. So for trend traders, you're going to look for two, fours, or fives. Five already means the trend is already occurring and you've already missed out on a little or a lot, we don't know, it just depends on the chart. The two is beginning of a trend where the sediment has just changed from one sediment to another, so four is the most ideal condition for you to trade, and two is kind of jumping a four in that it, you're going to trade the trend, the beginning of the trend, but you know the profits are going to be limited. Everyone okay with that? Okay. So now let's go through, and I want to go through the website real fast. And I want to show you guys the website. I'm going to zoom in. Can everyone see this okay? Yes? Maybe I'll zoom in some more. Okay. Now, first thing I want to talk about is browsers. Um, the best browser to see uh, all our website is pretty much going to be uh, Google Chrome or uh, Mozilla Firefox. You can look at it in, Mozilla, in Internet Explorer, but it just depends on what version. Um, and the reason why I'm saying that is there's different versions of Internet Explorer have different issues, so it's very hard to cater to all the different versions of Internet Explorer. So if you have any issues with Internet Explorer, uh, please try the website in Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox. Okay? Now, if you look at our website, this is assuming you've already gone through and registered for free and logged in. Um, basically, this is what our website looks like. You'll see all the header up here. Uh, with all the information there, and then you have two tabs here. Where the first one is called our heat map, second one's our stock scanner. Okay. If you scroll down below the heat map, you'll see basically our Twitter module, and then you'll see our our stock sediment module for both the daily and weekly time frame. And we'll go through and talk about each of these in just a moment. Okay. So. What we're going to do is first is we're going to talk about the heat map. If you come over here, right now we've chosen the currency heat map, but if you click on this down arrow key, you can choose any of the other heat maps that are available. Remember, we do all the futures, currency, Dow 30, S&P 500, country ETF, sector ETF, Malaysia. When we add the other global markets, uh, Canada, UK, India, and Singapore, they'll be listed here too. Uh, and it's, this is all based on subscription. Okay? Over here, you'll see the legend for the heat map. Uh, again, remember red is basically means you're bearish, you're betting on it going down. Green means basically you're betting going up. Now yellow, if you see these numbers like here, five, if you see them in yellow, that basically means they're overextended. So if you get a green and the letter is yellow, that means basically you're overbought. If you get a red and the number is yellow, that means basically you're oversold. Okay. The trend signals that you're looking for are two, fours, and five, and the counter trends are basically zeros, ones, and threes. Everyone okay with that? Okay. And again, the time frames that we support are basically 10 minute, 30 minute, 60 minute, 
120, 240 daily and weekly. Okay, and you guys have seen me on my market videos, the you, the weekly videos, pretty much show the heat map and go for analysis on the daily and weekly time frame. When you're looking for a two time frame scenario, and let's look at daily it being your trading time frame, the weekly being higher, you want to look for the first thing you want to look for is the daily and weekly to be the same color. If they're two different colors, that means you got conflict, and really there's not going to be any high probability trades. So if you look down here, there's no hit, nothing there, nothing there. Here you got the same color. Now what you do is you look for in your trading time frame a value of 2, 4, or 5. Okay? If you see a 2, 4, or 5, then you have an opportunity waiting for you. In this scenario, you do not see a 2, or 4, or 5, so there's no opportunity for this particular instrument. So if you keep on going down, you really don't see anything. Here's one here. We see a 5, but if you look here on the weekly, it's a yellow, so it's overextended, so that's not good either. So if you keep on scrolling down and looking here, you see a 4 here on the trading time frame, so that's good. But you also want to see a 2, 4, and 5 here on the weekly. If you don't see a 2, 4, or 5 on the weekly, that means your higher time frame is going to interfere with your daily, where you may get into the trade, make a little money, and then all of a sudden it reverses, which is not good. You want to always make sure that your higher time frame is not an obstacle, so you have some money you can make for the stop to move. Okay? Here, you got two different colors, two different colors. Uh, if you keep on scrolling down, you'll see at this time right now, for currencies, there's no opportunities as far as daily and weekly are concerned for and any long term at all. Okay? And you'll see a lot of these numbers right now are yellow or zeros, and the reason why is a lot of the trends have already occurred, and they're pretty much in a pullback phase or a trend reversal phase right now. Everyone understand that so far? Yes? Okay. The other thing, if you guys haven't seen this, is on the currencies. Um, if you're trading currencies and you want to filter and see what the best currencies to play, what you can do is go in and filter based on individual pairs. So if I come in here and just do Australian USD, I could sit there and filter on an individual pair. And I could see how this pair is in general to all the currency pairs out there. And if you look here, on a daily time frame, it tells me basically everything's in zero, which is not good. So you could tell the Australian pair is not good right now. If you come to the CAD pair, <coughs> You'll see there's not zeros, but you don't see many opportunities here either. So you could go through and you could filter based on these pairs. A couple of weeks ago, if you had basically on yen, you would have seen a lot of twos and fours here where they're all getting ready to trend. So at that point, if you're sitting there having to trade currencies and you want to find the best pair to trade, you could go in and individually filter and notice that the yen pair was getting strong compared to the other pairs. If you did the dollar, the dollar a couple of weeks ago was the same thing, where everything on the daily time frame was a two and a four. So by using the filtering here, you could filter based on the currency and determine the best currency to trade. So if you don't have much money and you need one and you're going to trade one pair, you could filter and determine the best currency to play by just looking at this. Everyone okay with that? Yes? Okay. So that basically describes our heat map there, and I'm going to go for the majority of that in a minute. Okay? Remember, right now I'm just trying to give you guys a web layout and all from there. Um, let me go through the top part here. If you go to our education tab here, okay, some of the key things I want to know is you go to videos, there's all these sections here uh, where we have our market outlook videos. This is every week. Uh, I'm pretty much putting out a video for currencies, for stocks, and for futures. Uh, all those videos are pretty much listed here. And if you go, you can pretty much see them every week that we're doing them. Uh, workshop videos, this is a workshop that we did in Canada last year where we went through Forex and taught people for a two-month period on everything from the fundamental side of Forex to the technicals to basic information for currencies and so forth. So uh, this is a two-month video. Uh, videos that we recorded on teaching people fundamentals 
and technical uh, behind the uh, tr currency trading. And then here, heat map and email videos. These are more emails on heat map uh, and also the email alerts. And it actually shows you some uh, email trades that we've taken uh, and shows you the uh, charts and the emails that we have. Okay. And then video resources, these are miscellaneous resources that are available there. We have a uh, Marcelio, uh, he asked, you know, the numbers inside the boxes of strategy? Yes, they are the strategy. So what you're looking for is these numbers here depict the strategy. So when you're looking to trade, you're looking for basically a 204. A 204 is the ideal. In fact, uh, the 4 for you guys as beginning traders, I would always look for 4. Okay. Four are probably the high probability trades out there. They're the best ones. The reason why is they have the ability to have the most unlimited profits there. A two is good too, but it's going to have limited profits because what's going to happen is you could trade a two, then it's going to get to a four, and it'll, the four will stop it. But the four can have unlimited profit. Okay. So really, in theory, if you want the best trades out there, I would stick to number fours. Okay. Does that answer your question? Okay, um, so the education tab, you have all that. Uh, we also are on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, so all that information is over there too, okay? Um, the stocks tab over here, we're going to come back to in a couple of minutes uh, when we go through the stock scanner sign and explain that. So we're just going to go back to the heat map. I'm going to wrap up the heat map in just a minute. If you scroll down here, this is our Twitter feed here uh, where you can see all the Twitter information here. Uh, today you could see that we actually blog the trade. You could go here to ichimikuwebsite.com. Over here, this gives you the various strategies for 7,500 stocks, and this kind of gives you a sediment for the U.S. stock market. And you could see based on the strategy overall what's been happening over time. This looks at a daily chart. This looks at the weekly chart, and you could see here from the weekly perspective, there's more bearish opportunities right now then bullish opportunities from the weekly basis. And you can see from the daily perspective, this number has gone up today. So there's more things that basically have gone up today. Sorry, this is yesterday. It hasn't been updated yet. Uh, from, from, uh, what's actually, what's the date today? Six, yeah. So this hasn't been updated yet because it's a daily time frame. Uh, but yes, uh, yesterday basically there was more bearish opportunities and so forth. So this kind of gives you overall market statistics uh, based on the strategies. Um, there was a question I hear about a market control strategy or method. Is it similar to your approach? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by cloud control strategy. Uh, if you're looking at cloud, the cloud strategy, that basically is represented by a number four for us. A three is basically when it breaks out of the cloud, and four is basically when it's confirmed uh, and uh, confirmed breakout out of the cloud. Okay. Now, a lot of this stuff is probably boring. I understand that. So I'm going to get to the, the really exciting stuff, uh, which a lot of people are probably here and waiting to hear, um, which is basically the email alerts. The reason why is easy, easy email alerts basically allow you to pretty much not even look at a chart. It tells you when the opportunities are there, and it tells you exactly what to look at. Okay. Um, so before I go for these email alerts, I want to show you the configuration for the email alerts. So I'm going to pull back this. If you go to settings, okay, um, here you can see all the individual products. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here. This is our basic time frame signal. This controls two time frame opportunities. So you could turn this off or on. And you could say how often you want us to check and send you emails. So you could set it for 10 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 2 hours, 40, daily or weekly. This is the frequency that we check and send out emails to you for two time frame opportunities for any of the instruments that you subscribe to. Okay. Now, if you want only the high probability instruments, then what you could do is you could come up here to the individual products and check on, I only want to see the four time frame buys or sales five time frames, six or seven, and you could choose a frequency, you could turn them on and off. So this is how you could turn on and off each individual product, and you could say how often you want to check it and how often you want the emails to come to you. 
if there's no opportunities there for a full time frame opportunity to buy or sell for come up for futures, it's not going to send you an email. It will check, but it won't send you an email. It'll only send you an email when there's an opportunity there. Okay. So I've gone through configurations, so now I'm going to go through and show you some examples of the email alerts. Can everyone see my screen okay? Okay. Yes, Manish. So in our email alerts, yeah, this is what our email alerts will look like. Yeah, I will be sending out a, uh, a recording for this. Okay. I will be, so this is what our email look, or alert looks like. In the subject, it'll tell you what time frame it is. If it's a two time frame opportunity, a four, five time frame opportunity, six or seven. Seven is basically the highest time frame opportunity where it basically means it's trending on a 10 minute, 30 minute, 60 minute, 120, 240 and daily and weekly. Okay. So that is the seven opportunity, seven time frame opportunity is where it's trending on all time frames. Okay. If you look here, the email basically shows you the trading time frame. Okay. Now, the lowest email that we send out is two time frames. I'm going to show you the two time frame one and explain how each of this works. When you have an instrument in a row, it basically represents a two time frame buy or sell. It's a buy when it's bullish. So if it's bullish here and you're in New Zealand, this basically represents a two time frame buy. Okay. Now, we're not showing you both time frames. We're only showing you the trading time frame because that's the one you should be trading. Okay. But it does not mean because this is in one row, this is one time frame. Okay. So if you see this Euro New Zealand in two rows, that means it's a possibility of a four time frame buy or sell. Everyone okay with that? Okay. So remember, each row whenever you see these emails represents a minimum of two time frame buyers or sell. Each row represents two time frames. Okay? And the time frame that we're showing you is the trading time frame, the one that you should be trading. We're not going to show you the higher. And the reason why we don't show you the higher is that um, a couple of weeks ago we had actually changed the emails where we were showing both the trading and the higher. And what we found was is that some people were taking the higher time frame and the problem was is that the next higher time frame to that was not good. So what happens, they enter and then they run into an obstacle right away and would not make any money. So that was not good at all. So you want to make sure that you take the trading time frame and make sure that the higher time frame does not have an obstacle so you have a chance of getting a running start out of the gate to make some money. If you don't, then what's going to happen is you're going to hit your maximum risk straight out of the gate, which is not good. Okay. Now, what we've done in the email here is we split it up in three zones. Okay. So the the day trading zone here is basically what we classify as a 10 minute, 30 minute, and 60 minute. Some people may not count the 60 minute day trading zone, but I went and included it into the day trading zone. Okay. The next zone is basically the midterm zone, which is 120 minute to 240, and then you got your long term zone which is basically the daily time frame. Okay? So these are our zones here that we have. Okay? Now, when you're looking at these emails, okay, there's a couple of ways you can look at them. Some of the day traders will sit there and say, well, I, since I'm day trading, I only want uh, an opportunity in these zones here. Well, you're wrong to think that. The reason why is you never want to go, and go against the higher time frame tra trends at all. So if you're day trading, look for your trading time frame here, but also look for your instrument in either in the mid or long term too. The reason why is if the higher time frames are not supporting you on the lower time frames, you're never going to win and you're going to be very limited with your profits. And your reward risk ratio going to the trade is not going to be good. Okay? So what I always like to tell my students is, is that if you're day trading, make sure that you have your instrument either in the 10, 30, or 60 minute but also in the 120, 240, or daily. If you could get one in the 120 and 240 and then also in the daily, that's even better. Okay? So if you could get an instrument in all three zones, then you get a high probability of a trade where you're going to sit there and get some really good profits out of it with one contract. If you only got it in one zone, then what means is you're going to have limited profit. 
and you're going to run into an obstacle with the next zone. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes? No? Guys, again, get some uh, feedback can you to see if you guys have covered this so far. Yes? No? Okay. Thank you, Mike, for no answering. Eh? No other. Now, we have some people that love to trade the inner zones. Okay? Uh, so we have some people that love to trade the 60 minutes. If you're trading the 60 minutes, my recommendation would be to make sure your instrument is, a, is in the 60 minute, but also in one of the 10 or 30, and then also in the higher time frame. Okay? And the reason why is, is that if you have something in the 10 or 30, it's going to push into the 60 minutes. So you're going to get a push from the bottom. And then if you have a, the instrument in the higher time frames, that means there's not going to be an obstacle ahead of you. So we have one person that's a subscriber to our service that basically just loves to trade the 60 minute. And what he does, he looks for opportunities where you have the instrument either on the 10 minute or the 30 minute and then also on the 60 and then make sure that the 12240 a daily are also there too so you make sure that there's no obstacle above him in trading it up but also you make sure that he gets that little push from the bottom okay everyone okay with that we have a question hey James I got the uh, your question so we'll be showing us how you decide that particular time frame is bullish or bearish yeah we will And James, you could see if this time frame here, if you get this Euro New Zealand, it's bullish, it's basically in a bullish time frame. That means there is an Ichimoku strategy ready to go on this particular time frame right now. All it has to do is break the last pivot high for a bullish scenario. For a bearish scenario, you have to break the last pivot low and you're ready to go. Then we'll look at some live examples in just a moment. Okay? Remember. One thing I want to stress, and James has highlighted for me, these are opportunities here for you. Okay? These are opportunities. Does not mean they're ready to go. So this 10-minute Euro New Zealand in this example means it's a bullish opportunity. But in order for that trade to trigger, it still has to break the last resistance, which is the last pivot high. Okay? For a bearish opportunity here, this still has to break the last support in order for the trade to trigger. If it doesn't break these support resistances, a resistance here for the bullish trade and support here, then there is no opportunity there. It, the trade did not trigger at all. So these are opportunities, but they have to sit there and break the support resistance in order for the trade to trigger. Um, the next question from Alberta is, how much time do we have to enter a position? Well, you can't really put a, a particular time on a particular trade. The reason why is the markets vary with time. Okay, uh, During high volatile scenarios, uh, the time length may be shorter. During low volatile scenarios, the time length is going to be longer. So the only thing you could do is just sit there and wait and be patient uh, where you know you got the orders out and you know if hopefully you're trading a broker system that when you enter a trade, you'll get alerted. Um, in the email service and the heat map service, uh, the, the strategies are built so that if it, the price reverses without entering a trade and destroys the pattern, it will automatically change to a zero. So for us, you know, there's no time limit, but if price goes to a certain zone the, on the opposite side of our entry, then we'll automatically move to a zero and say, okay, the pattern is no longer valid and the trade opportunity is gone. Does that make sense? <clears throat> if you know Ichimoku, then it pretty much is the Cajun zone or the green line from the videos that you see. So if price ever crosses that green line again, then the, pretty much the trade is invalid. Is that okay, Alberto? Yes? Okay.
Roberta, can you define what you mean by percentage winner alerts? We're going to go for a lot of these emails in a minute and uh, look at them, and we'll talk about percentages and stuff like that. If I don't answer your question before the end of the seminar, just let me know. Okay? So does everyone understand how these emails work? Okay? Now, let me explain one thing. If you have a two time frame opportunity with one instrument and a seven time frame opportunity with another instrument, which one do you think is the higher probability of winning? Seven. If it triggers, it's seven. Okay? So the more number of time frames you have in sync, that means Ichimoku strategy there, the higher the probability you can have. Is that clear with everyone? Also, the higher the number of time frames in sync, the less number of trades. So if you sit there and tell me that and say that, hey, I'm just going to be a seven time frame buy or sell trader, well, guess what? You better have a lot of patience because seven time frame buys and sells don't come often. Okay? So if you're a person that wants to put on a trade every day, you're not going to be looking for seven time frames all the time. You're probably going to need to start with four or fives. And if seven comes, it's great. But in order for you to make your trade quota that you're trying to fulfill every day, you got to sit down and look for lower number of time frames to be in sync. Okay? And in that scenario, you want to make sure you're wise where you're choosing, you know, if you're a day trader and you're going to sit there and take a four time frame opportunity, you want to make sure there's an instrument here, here, and here, not all here and just here. So it's four time frames across the board. Okay? So let's move on, and I'll show you some examples. Now, this is an email from a person that subscribed to our service. You can see this was basically sent 4-19-2012. Um, he basically, if he took a trade of Pound New Zealand, 4th of March, it was a sixth time frame opportunity. This gave over 500 pips in a day and a half. This gives you an idea of, of uh, a, a particular trade that this person has taken, which was a sixth time frame opportunity. Okay. The more time frames you have in sync, that means the less obstacles there are in, and the higher the profits you can achieve in a short amount of time. So those are the things that you're looking for. If you have a two time frame opportunity, that means you're going to have a lot of obstacles. If you have a six time frame opportunity, that means you're going to have less. So Alberta's six time frame opportunity means that basically it's trending like on the 10 minute, 30 minute, 60 minute, 120, 240. Okay, so if you count them up, it's six time frames, and I'll give you an example in just a moment. Okay, so here's an email that basically we received here on 5-11-2012. Okay, um, this is dealing with futures, so you can see the futures charts here. This is basically the uh, Dow Mini futures. Okay. Okay, so this is the Dow futures here, and this is a five time frame opportunity here. Okay, now remember we're we're not showing you the high time frame; we're only showing you the trading time frame. Okay, so if you look here, even though this is if you count this up, this is in five boxes, so this is a five time frame. This is very easy to see. This is a five time frame sell. Okay, but there was an Ichimoku strategy, a number two, on a ten minute. There was an Ichimoku strategy on a 60 minute, which is a number four, which is the cloud breakout, which is the ideal one. There was a 120, 240, and daily. Everyone see that? So there was an Ichimoku strategy on a 10 minute, 60 minute, 120, 240, and daily. So this is a great, great opportunity here where there's not many obstacles on multiple time frames at all. All we had to do, since this is bearish, was break some minor support levels. If you broke the support levels, it would start a domino effect across all these time frames to a point it would start a major trend to the downside. Everyone see that? Okay. Now, what's interesting was at the same time we got this email about the Dow futures on 5.11. Remember, the futures deal with the, uh, the Dow Joe's uh, U.S. stock market. We also got an email on the S&P 500 futures and the NASDAQ futures at the same time almost and the same date. Okay? It wasn't a five time frame sell. These were four time frame sales. 
And if you notice, the 240 wasn't set up for these particular products. Okay? But we had all three future products, both the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the E-mini S&P 500 futures, all give us a, a multiple time frame sell signal right on the same date and time. Okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a chart. This is basically E-mini S&P 500 futures on the daily time frame. This red bar right here is when we got the signal for the email. Okay? So when we got the email, this is when we were looking at basically shorting these future products to go short in the market. And you could see the after what happened uh, with the markets after that. Okay? So when you get these emails, you still could use your own strategies to enter. You could use your own money management to enter. You could do whatever you want. So you could look at these as basically high opportunity opportunities waiting for you to, to enter. But you still have to wait for sure, make sure it breaks the last support in this case because it's bearish or the last resistance if it's bullish. So you could still use your own trading system, your own money management, everything that you want to do. This will be like a glorified scanner that finds multiple time frame opportunities for you, which gives you high probability opportunities out there. How do you determine the value of four for one chart? Well, you don't have to determine it. We already determined it here. And you can see we give you the four here. A four is basically an Ichimoku strategy, which is a Kumo breakout. On this webinar, we're not going to go for Ichimoku at all. If you go back to the website and go to the education section, there's tons of Ichimoku webinars there where you can learn more about the Ichimoku strategies. Okay? The key thing is, is a four is basically a Kumo breakout strategy. A two is basically the Cajuns and Cross strategy. And you could see those strategies there. Okay? Okay? The key thing is you don't even need to know Ichimoku at all to trade here. And believe it or not, we have the earlier subscriber, um, sorry, and some of the subscribers don't even know Ichimoku. They're just sitting here looking for these time frame opportunities, waiting for them to break the last support resistance and just putting on the trades. So really this is irrelevant of you knowing Ichimoku. Okay? And one of the reasons why we developed this service is, is that one of the issues that a lot of retail traders have is, is that the more they look at charts, the more they start fabricating things that are not in the charts. Okay? And it's a big, big issue with a lot of retailers in that the more you look at a chart, the more you're going to fail. This is one reason why 98% of retail traders out there fail. Okay? So the whole idea with the email service and the email service was to sit there do research and find the high probability trades without even looking at a chart. So when you see these opportunities, you then go look at a chart which is good. So it keeps you away from looking at bad charts and it also keeps you away from looking at one particular instrument where if you look at it after a while, you can start seeing things that are not really there. Okay? So this is one of the reasons why this was developed is to sit there, find the opportunities for you, and only allow you to look at good charts where opportunities exist in them. Okay? So this is the S&P. So let me go through. I'm going to go through and show you some other products and other th opportunities. This is this morning that came across uh, June 6th this morning at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This was the Euro New Zealand, a three time frame sell. Okay? Now over here, it's a, it was in the email that sent was sent out basically, okay. And over here, it's basically in the 120 minute and the 240 minute. And you could see the 120 minute had a four opportunity on there. Everyone see that? Now, even though this is two two boxes, the 120 minute and 240 share share the same higher time frame. That's why it's a three time frame sell opportunity. Okay. The best time frame to trade this one was the 120 minute. Okay, which would have had a four. And if you look at the trade this morning, basically this was a 9 a.m. bar. So basically this was basically where the email was sent out right there. So this morning we basically traded from here all the way down to here. Okay, this is basically a two hour chart here and a daily chart here where we're just showing you the daily chart. And you can see the daily chart was also a two. It's a two because it crossed this green line and was forming this little pivot here. 
For sure. Uh, the, the question was, would you say that Ichimoku would be combined with pro, with price action? Believe it or not, Ichimoku is pure price action. Uh, a lot of people don't think so, but it is. Uh, so if you look at Ichimoku, it is pure, based on pure price action. The lines that you see are not based on not moving average indicators at all. John uh, had a question, why don't you count signals in many boxes and highlight it in an email and even send different emails with pointing this? Uh, when you say count signals, well, the email specifically, this, this doesn't show you this. The header in the email will say four time frames, five time frames, six time frames. You'll get an individual email for each number. So if you got currencies, you'll get a four time frame email currency. You'll have a separate one for five, separate one for six, separate one for seven. So we are counting them for you. The only thing you have to do is determine your trading time frame and put the trade on. And the reason why is we don't tell you the time frame. The reason why is each trader has their own different profile. Some people prefer to trade 10 minutes. Some people prefer to trade 60. Some people prefer higher time frames. So all we do is we're showing you the trading time frames, and then you could pick based on your trader profile on what trade you want to take, what time frame. Does that answer your question, John? But you do get an individual email for every time frame, for every product. Alberta, you can't see the questions from other people, but I'm basically reading them out and answer them. Okay. Okay, so this was a three time frame. Um, and if you look at the, whoa, whoa, sorry, I'm going backwards. So let's go look at some more emails. Okay. So this was basically here, 313-2012 or 730. This was a six time frame sell opportunity for silver. These are the mini silver contracts on the future side here. If you look, it was a 10 minute, 30 minute, 60 minute, 120, 240, and daily. Okay, so this was a six time frame opportunity here. Okay, and if you look here, the email basically came out right here. So this is basically the pattern that we traded this going down. This is a two hour chart. So this is basically here, and we traded this down. So John had a comment that says it could be more useful for busy people. Believe it or not, John, it's actually useful for busy people and also for day traders too. And one of the reasons why is um, with the markets now, diversification is key. You want to go where the opportunities lie. You don't want to sit there and trade one particular product. So what happens with the email and the email alert, it shows you where all the opportunities exist, and then you can sit there and go trade those individual products. All our day traders inside, our student day traders, are pretty much using uh, the heat map and email services for day trading, believe it or not. And they're trading from currencies to stocks to futures across the board. Okay. Uh, Bob had a comment says, can you do a real time for ES? When you say real time for ES, um, the heat map show you the heat map of the ES? Is that what you're asking, Bob? Okay, I'll show that to you in just a moment, Bob. Just let me go for the emails, alerts, and I'll come full circle right back to that. Okay. Uh, John, you had another question. Why, uh, what I wanted to see is Euro, Euro New Zealand was in two boxes, and it is strong buy. I'm not quite getting your comment, John. Euro New Zealand. It, it, it's a strong sell buy, not buy. Oh, why is it a strong, a strong buy? First, it's a strong sell. Okay, and two, it's in the inner day trading zone. Okay, it was not in the lower zone, but that's fine because this is more in the intermediate zone. 
when you start getting into the higher time frames, you really don't need a push from the lower low time frame. When you get into the lower time frames, this is where a lot of volatility exists. That's kind of where you're looking for more ex extreme conditions to, to look for to kind of filter out all the, the little uh, getting in the trades, losing, getting in the trades, and so forth. So you want to do more filtering on the lower time frames, and it becomes less and less as you become going to the higher time frames. Yeah, and John, the, the, your comment is true. If you had more boxes, it would be more higher probability. So when we enter this trade, we know that basically the 120 minute had an Ichimoku strategy, 240 and also a daily had an uh, Ichimoku strategy. Since we had the 120, 240 and daily had an Ichimoku strategy, we knew that we were going to make some money, but the thing was is that since it was only a three time frame sell, the profits were going to be very limited. So we're very cautious of that moving forward. But believe it or not, in this market condition today, this was the highest time frame opportunity this morning. Uh, reason why there was not many opportunities this morning at all, and this is the, probably the best one out there this morning. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm just going through... Uh, how much percent are in the profit of the signals of value four? Yeah, Alberto, it's it's hard to give you a percentage on the fours. Remember, they still have to break the support resistance, right? But the four trades are the highest probability trades that you'll have. Okay, and if you got a four and it's in a multiple time frame scenario, your probabilities go up. But as far as giving you a percentage, there's no way anyone's going to give that to you. And if anyone does, they're lying to you reason why is you could give a percentage for a particular market cycle, but there's no way you could sit there and give a percentage over a 10-year period because markets keep on changing and so forth. Okay. So Craig had a question. So the higher the time frame, the longer you have to stay in the trade. Yes, Craig, the higher the time frame, the longer you want to stay into a trade. Reason why is the more profit potential. Let me give you an example. The average number of points a 10-minute trade in the currencies will give you is 20 to 40 pips. The average number of points the 120 minute time frame will give you is anywhere from about, about 100 to 300 points. A 10-minute trade will last you about one to two hours. In length, a 120-minute trade can sit there and last you, believe it or not, one to three days. Okay. Uh, Miss Law had a question. If you had taken a buy on a black five and it turns uh, to a yellow, say, with 30 minutes entering the trade, is it good to get out of the trade? Well, first, Miss Law, um, when you take an opportunity that's a five, that means it's already trending. When you take that, be very, very cautious. Reason why is you never know where that trend's going to end. You're not getting in beginning of the trend at all. You're getting in probably about halfway to three fourths into the trend. So be very cautious and make sure that your tights are st your stops are very tight moving forward. Okay. And one way I could give you a percentage is, is that when if you look at the trend and say a trend is 100%, when you trade a number two, you're trying to get the, the first 10 to 20% of the trend. Okay? When you trade a number four, you're trying to get the beginning next 20 to 40%. And then the number five comes in and gives you the next 50% of that trend. Does that make sense? So the way the orders of the trends are is, is that 2 is the beginning of the trend, the 4 is next, and then the 5 is after that. And basically the 2 and the 4 are trying to jump the major trend, which is number 5. If you try to enter a 5 trend, what's going to happen is you're going to, it's trending, but 20 to 40% of the trend is already over at that point. And your risk is going to be a lot higher. So your reward risk ratio for a number five is not going to be that great, believe it or not. And you're actually going to be occurring a lot more risk in that trade. Okay. What is it?
Okay. Because let's go on. Let's move on. Show you some more charts here. Okay. So this was silver. Now here's an opportunity I want to show you that did not work. Okay. So and it did not even trigger. Majority of the times when you get these four, five, and six time frames emails, a lot of the times they don't trigger. Okay. So you got to remember that they don't trigger at all if you don't enter the trade. So just because you get them, don't get excited. Okay. So here's one. This is basically a six time frame opportunity for BCX stock, and this basically was 5/11/2012. The email came out right here, okay? These blue dots note basically the entry here. So if you look, this price never went and triggered the entry at all, and when it crossed this green line, the trade was, the, the order was canceled. So this never entered the trade at all. Okay? How do you know when the trade triggers? Well, what you do is when you get the email, let's say the email, you got the email right here on this little red candle here. You look back and you find the last pivot of high. In this scenario, it was here. A couple of points above that, place your entry. So this last pivot high here was your last resistance, and you want to enter above that last resistance. Everyone okay? Is a two only good for a price if it is above the Kumo? No, uh, you you, you kind of want the two to be uh, uh, before the Kumo breakout. Okay, reason why is a lot of people will take a two after the four. That's not good at all. Basically, means the the it was it, the opportunity had a after, from a four it had an opportunity to take off and due to volatility it came down. And majority of the times when you see a two after a four, it's basically enter, probably going to enter a consolidation pattern. Okay, here's another trade. This is orange juice. This is a four time frame buy. It was in the thirty minute, uh, and it was also in the daily time frame. If you look at a chart, this is basically where we entered here and we got out for profits here, which is pretty much at the next resistance level, which was dating back there. Okay? I'm going to quickly go through some. This is a great opportunity here that a lot of our students and took and clientele took. This was a seven time frame opportunity on the US dollar. Okay? This was back in February 23, 2012. So beginning of this year, back in February 2, sorry. February 23 this year, this is when the dollar had a seven time frame opportunity. This means basically there was no obstacles on this thing at all. Okay? And if you look, this is when we got the email right here on this bar right there. Okay? And you probably know the dollar pretty much is still going strong and strong and strong. So this is actually way, way down there. Okay? This is another example here. This is CAD yen. This is a great trade that basically where we entered on this trade and uh, this took off for a thousand pip profit. On January 23 to, uh, this year, uh, the CAD yen had a five time frame buy. It was in a 10 minute, 60 minute, and 120. And if you look at the chart here, this is basically the opportunity here, right here, of it moving up here. That email was basically right there. So there was an opportunity there, and then there was an opportunity on the pullback, and then over here. But this is a thousand pip movement with one contract that occurred. Okay, this is another opportunity that just came up recently, uh, 522, uh, uh, which was a six time frame sell on Google at 11:40 p.m. Eastern time. This is a 10 minute, 30 minute, 60, 120. 240. This came down to be a six time frame sell. And if you look on Google, this red bar right here is basically when the email came out. So at that point, we set up for a trade, and this is a four hour chart right here. So we set up for the trade, and the entry was right here, and basically played it down. Okay. This is heating oil futures. This is basically February 20. Uh, 1 p.m. This is a six time frame buy for heating oil futures. You can see it was in 10 minute, 30 minute, 60 minute, 120, 240. And if you look at the chart, 
the email was sent right here. So this is basically when we started looking at buying your heating oil, and you can see the huge movement it made up. Okay. Now, there's many, many more examples we could go through. The um, reason why is we've entered beta. Uh, beta was pretty much for the email alert, and the heat map was January, and we pretty much released the product in March. So since that time, um, we've had you know many, many opportunities that have occurred out in the market uh, for all these multiple time frame buys and sells. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to quickly show you a two time frame one and show you how you could set up to basically buy or sell. Okay. So just bear with me for a sec. I'm going to show you a two time frame email. Just pulling up the email. Okay. So if you look here, right now these are all the two time frame emails right now that are available out there. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is let's go look at the pound cad on the 240 minute and I'll show you how you can look at this. We're actually yeah, pound cad on the 120 minute, which is a four. So let's look at pound cad. And a 120 minute here. Okay. Now what this is is this. This is exactly where we're at. What you got to do is you got to find the last support because this is the bearish trade, which is here. And then what you got to do is place an order to sell a couple of points below there. Okay. And that's basically how you do this. Your stop would always be this green line plus a couple of points, which is up here. Okay. Now this is how you could sit there to set up the trade with Ichimoku. You could always sit there and use your own particular uh, trading system to do this. But this is how we do it with Ichimoku. So you have an option after you get these emails to do it your particular way or you could sit there and do it the way Ichimoku trades. With Ichimoku our stops are always this green line plus and minus the buffer and our entries are always the last pivot high, the last pivot low with plus and minus a buffer. In this case, since we're selling, it will be the last pivot low minus the buffer. If we were buying, you would have taken the last pivot high plus the buffer. Okay? Do you teach your method or have a video on it? Mercutio, um, unfortunately, we don't go through too much details on entries. Uh, uh, the only time we go for details on that is in our classes. And the reason why is with entries, there's a lot of uh, money management that goes behind it. Um, with our entries, we talk about reward risk a lot, right? a lot. We talk about concepts such as preserve mode, where you're going out and you're protecting your profits. So, you know, we don't talk about or do any videos uh, at all in regards to, um, you know, entries, exact entries and stuff like that. Reason why it's, it's subjected to, to what type of trader profile you are. Because, you know, you could be a pullback trader or you could be a breakout trader. And then depending on each of those profiles, there's different ways you could sit there and do pullback trading and also different ways you could do breakout trading. In here, I just talked about breakout trading to be unique and simple and giving you one scenario. But there's many other techniques that are involved um, which are very, very hard to go through, uh, you know, uh, in a video. Okay. Next, we're gonna now. We're just gonna quickly go for our scanner. Um, and if you go for our scanner here, let me just shrink this down a little. Now, there's not much to go for on a scanner because it's pretty simple. I'm just gonna go to the scanner here. Yeah, I mean, I'm trading, uh, the charts I'm showing you right now are from uh, from Finkerswim from TD Ameritrade. You could choose any charting platform out there um, from CQG to eSignal to FXCM to FXDD uh, and so forth. So, 
you know, you could choose any charting platform that has HMU Go on there. Um, so, you know, don't think that just because I'm sitting there using this charting platform, this is what you have to use. No, it's not at all. Ichimoku is a standard indicator that's available out there. Uh, so you could pretty much use any charting platform that you like to use. Um, the key, and believe it or not, you don't even have to use Ichimoku with an email service and heat map. Um, it's irrelevant of Ichimoku. We're already doing everything for you. So, you know, you see the six time frames, four time frame or five time frame opportunities. It's up to you then to sit there and just find the last support resistance and put an order out there. And that's it. So, you know, what we've done is we're finding the opportunities for you so you could be diverse. We're only allowing you to look at good charts. And then the third, we're allowing you to concentrate on money management for the trade, which is the key, key part for you as a retailer to be successful. So, you know, with the, the emails and heat map service, we're kind of giving you positive energy to kind of gain confidence uh, in order to build your confidence as a trader and to make sure you don't go down those paths where, you know, that confidence gets taken away. You know, some things we say in our class is 50% of trading is the technical site. The other 50% is basically the psychology of the mind. And, you know, a lot of people think, well, with the email services, yeah, it saves you a lot of time, and that's the only thing they think about. Well, no, it's not just that. You know, the psychology of part of trading is, is that the more you look at charts, the more you're going to fail. The goal is to go in, look at a chart, analyze it, and get out because your first instinct is pretty much right. And then second is to be diversified, especially with the global markets we have now. You really want to be diversified, and you want to go out and find where the trends are. You don't want to trade something like this, which is going back and forth, back and forth. You're never going to be a successful, consistent trader trading something like that. The only way you can be a successful, consistent trader is where with one contract, you can make money per contract in taking a trend and writing it up. Because while this is going, it frees you up time to sit there and trade other things. Does that answer your question, Marcy? Okay. And lastly, I'm just going to briefly go for this because we're, I know we're, uh, typical people have 20 to 30 minute tension span. I've gone way past that. So I'm just going to quickly go through this. This is not the heat map. And the reason why is you can't put 7,500 symbols on a heat map service. That's just virtually impossible. Okay. So what we've done is we created a scanner here uh, where you can sit there and choose a strategy, which is basically two, fours, ones, and threes. Remember, fours are the best ones, okay? And then you could choose the time frames. So if you're a long-term trader, you could use daily, weeklies. If you're the short-term day trader, you could choose 10 or 30 minutes, okay? If you're looking at retirement accounts, weekly time frame is the best, believe it or not, with four. We've been doing that, and our, basically our retirement accounts have been getting a nice percentage increase just taking these trades. And remember, when you look at these right, the retirement accounts, your projections for those trades are anywhere from three months to nine months, depending on what's going on, okay? So weekly time frame are longer term trades. That's why we're saying these are more for retirement. Uh, daily time frames are where people are working, don't have time to look at charts that often. And for the day traders out there, we got the 10 and 30 minutes, okay? Here, you're basically gonna get the symbol, you're gonna get the description, sector, volume, today's volume here, uh, the date. This is basically the direction you're betting on. And if you know Ichimoku, this is the future cloud here. Okay, here you can sit there filter in, in the stock scanner based on beginning price or end price. You could fill in any in, any one of these. So you could say I only want stocks between ten dollars and twenty dollars. You could put that in here. This is basically uh, if you could filter based on beginning or end volume for the sixty-day average volume here. And then you could also filter on volume for today. Some people for day trading only want to trade stocks that have. Uh, a million, two million shares already traded, so you could put those filters there. Okay, so this is pretty simple. So there's not much to go on a stock scanner, so that's available there. Um, a lot of our subscribers pretty much just live on the heat map. Reason why everything's there, uh, but occasionally if they want to sit there and f go out and find some more opportunities, then you know you could expand from the Dow 
get away from the Dow 30, 500, the country ETFs and sectors, and move into the other 7,500 plus stocks by using the stock scanner. Yeah, so you know, especially if you do, if you're a small cap, small cap stock uh, trader, you could sit there and go to the stock scanner side, and this will find all the stocks that are, you know, the low end, uh, dollar to two dollar ranges, and you could trade those stocks there too. A lot of people in January and February trade a lot of the small uh, small cap stocks. The reason why that's a seasonal pattern, and that's pretty much where they trend a lot. So a lot of people will start trading those small cap scanner uh, stocks at those points. So we get a lot of activity, especially during January and February, on our stock scanner, uh, which is searching for those opportunities there. Does anyone have any questions? No? Well, that's pretty much wrapping up things. Um, if you guys... We will post this video online, uh, you know, and it will be available out there. Uh, if you have any questions, you can sit there and contact us here at info.eicapital.com, e or you could contact us in any of our global locations here with the phone numbers there. Okay. Um, the key thing is, is that you know, if you have not seen the service, uh, you do have ability to sign up for a 30-day free trial. So if you go into account settings, or cl click on upgrade. You do have the ability to sign up for a 30-day free trial once, um, and you, so you can go in and sign up for that. Um, Mike Zimmerman had a question. Um, so if you click on Upgrade, Mike, you could go in and see their prices. If you want all the instruments out there, they basically are showing you a price of $129 a month, or you could basically get a um, two months for free, so the annual subscription is $12.90, and that's everything from currency, stocks, futures, all that. If you're looking for one individual product, such as like currencies, it's $59.99 a month, or uh, you'll save two months uh, by signing up for an annual subscription, so it's $599.99 a month, and then vice versa, and just keep them going down. So, you know, you can sign up. Basically, what we have is individual packages for $59.99 a month, or if you want everything, it's basically $129 a month. Okay? And if you, all you do is you click on it. Uh, click on these upgrades and then at that point uh, you could subscribe uh, all the information um, you know is, is kept private uh, credit card information is all encrypted and all that stuff and we are certified uh, with the credit card services everything so all data here is basically encrypted uh, so that even if someone hacks into our website it's not a big deal uh, no one could ever get anything because we can't even see it Or CEO, uh, if you're interested in paying with PayPal, you can contact us. Uh, the form of payment right now is credit card, but you can contact us for PayPal too if you like. Okay. Now, I just want to emphasize one thing. Um, you know, a lot of people, if you don't even know the heat map, it's not a big deal. The key thing I just want to summarize from this webinar is these email alerts. You're not going to find anything out there which is going to give you a multiple time frame scenario at all. In fact, most people do two time frames at most. No one even branches past that at all. And this is, gives you a, a view of everything that's going on and actually goes and finds that needle in the haystack and all the opportunities out there and, and tells you when they're available. Okay. I think that's it. Uh, if you guys have any more questions, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, we will post this uh, video on the web very, very soon. Okay? Thank you.